you are looking for a brand new wild deer guide well guess what guys it's 2024 i'm updating every hero and he is the first on our playlist so enjoy today's video on wild deer the ice mage and arguably one of the best epic heroes in the entire game of call of dragons Hello guys, yes, welcome to today's video. Smash like, comment and subscribe quickly for all of that content you need for Call of Dragons because we know and we always deliver the best content here for D4 players, free to play, low spenders and even for the spenders we do cover you guys too with certain videos tailored for your needs. But today we are going over Wild Deer and among the light, even for a spender, Wild Deer might be one of your actual preferred heroes, depending on the pairings that we're going to go over. But what we're going to have in this nice, easy guide for 2024, all the relevant talents, all the relevant pairings, and more importantly, obviously, the pets and artifact combinations you're going to want for this hero. So let's go straight into his skills. We're going to go through them really quickly because they're nice and easy to understand. His first skill is a 700 damage aoe nuke and this is very important because this will deal 700 damage to the target and free by uh nearby legions inflicting the gloom effect and when you awaken the hero you will get the freeze which is really really cool and important later on as we will notice the really cool thing i will let you guys know about this skill compared to other skills in the game like lilia's you'll notice this deals diffused damage, meaning this damage on Lilia's AoE is reduced by 15%. But when you look at the big boy Wonder Waldea, his is not a diffused damage nuke, meaning this is actually dealing 700 damage to all of those targets. So it's a very, very powerful area of effect and insane, literally just insane damage nuke, right? So when we go into the next three skills, these are all passive skills that you just have on your march. And this is the first one, which is a nice 10% HP and the 10% a magic attack bonus. Just makes it so you can obviously sustain damage and deal a little bit more damage. His skill two is one of the most favorite ones and kind of gives you, if you're a Rise of Kingdoms player, Sun Tzu vibes here with that 15% hero skill damage bonus. And then on top of all of this, he has a 600 shield factor when he starts to take hero skill damage, which is actually really clever because it gives him a little bit of a PvP edge because it gives him a little bit of tankiness, which, you know, a lot of majors actually don't have. So it's really cool that this epic hero that you can get through the League of Order has all of this in his kit straight away and we've already gone over the awakening but i will just showcase it quickly but you can see it is a damage nuke increase so you get 100 extra damage you can also see the freeze that gets applied compared to the non-freeze up at the top right so nice and simple talent and uh, uh, skills there for you guys so this is a wild deer nice and simple hero he's very easy to understand he just wants to do area of effect damage nuke with mage based heroes so when we go into these hero pairings we're always going to advise two pairings straight away for free to play and low spenders and this is depending if you're in season one or onwards obviously but the very first ever sort of pairing you're going to be using with this guy will be Waldea with an Alloin. I'm not going to lie, these two are fantastic pairing together. They just complement each other really, really well because, again, Alloin does some really nice single target damage and he slows down the target as well, which is really, really great. He also gives the exact same stats that the Wild Deer does and he just has some nice extra bonuses all entailed into his kit that you can go and check over quickly yourselves and just see why I'm saying this because once you understand the overlap, you'd be like, oh yeah, I can see this as a very free-to-play friendly match. However, once you've got past this stage, you're going to be more likely in the mid-game. And one, what I mean by the mid-game is you will most likely have your awakened Wild Deer here. And then, then there's the big man and the one and only Valen. And Valen, you're going to start generally using, depending on, obviously, your stamina and stuff, but you're going to kind of use this hero at 5 one, 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 one. I'm not going to lie, at 5 one, 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 it's okay to use it with your Wild Deer. As long as Valen is just in the deputy slot and he's not doing that, he's going to do insane amounts of area of effect damage. 
with obviously your wild ear which is great but the way you get the honestly the big benefit out of this or where you start to feel obviously results honestly is when you do get the 5511 five, valen i would call that the minimum like the best minimal investment or the best time to use valen with the wild ear because you do get in this second skill the 15 percent hero skill damage bonus plus that 20 percent march speed which is really really nice and complements as you can imagine wild deer with that 15 percent um hero skill damage bonus we get here in that third skill too so it's really really great and over the late game and when i mean by late game you might have played about four to five seasons you could have played maybe a little bit more depending on how active you are and maybe how lucky you are and maybe even how much you invest into the game you will awaken this Valen. And once you awaken Valen, I'm not going to lie, guys, Valen awaken with this Wild Deer is just a monstrous match. It's one of the best matches, honestly, you can ever run as a free to play low spender player. And I'm even going to recommend it for even the T5s because this is a great actual pair. And I think it's one of the best pairings in the entire game. And it actually frees up other heroes where you can use them in different situations like maybe like a Lilia uh, and Fear combo. And you can buff both Lilia and now this match with the Fear Shields for like a T5 player. So it just shows you that nice quick example of the pairings. So those are the ones I'm going to mainly recommend. I'm not going to lie. If you're going to ask any other questions, just has, hit them in the comments below. I just think those are the two main pairings, personally, you're going to be using with Wild Deer in 2024. And it's either going to be Valen or Alloween. So pick which one is better and go with it, right? Now, let's go into the last little combinations, which is the pet and the artifacts because that's the only things we need to basically run our march and then we can go over the talent section really nicely and really quickly and that just finishes up our hero guide for the wild deer today so the pets you are going to have different options i am going to suggest with wild deer and it does depend on what you want to do so most case scenarios and i will always suggest this for any player that is always uncertain maybe just you know maybe scared of going for a, you know a cool maybe challenging pet always always go for a sapphire phaedric why sapphire phaedrics are just a fantastically great mage pet it does nice area of effect damage there's nothing complicated about it and the beautiful thing about this actual skill you'll notice is anytime you inflict this scorch freeze or ensnare through the pain bloom we're going to deal more damage and that's through the forceful pain bloom and as you know while deer does this fantastic and with um your alloween or your valen you're going to trigger this again so you can see this is actually a really good combination with that hero if you are a little bit more adventurous i am going to actually recommend one other pet and some people might be surprised but it is the thunder lizard guys don't sleep on this pet right now thunder lizard is actually absurd the amount of single target damage this thing can pump out especially when you get the right build on it it is obscene so you can really make this wild deer match pump out some seriously scary damage with this thunder lizard if you wanted to go for more single target dps over more of the you know sapphire split build where you're doing insanely good area of effect damage too right the only other option and this is one i'm going to say just as a third and last choice and i don't really want to recommend it too much but if you want to kind of be you know a little bit unique on the battlefield you can go for the ice lizard but the way the ice lizard generally is played in this game currently is more of a utility based pet so what i mean by that even though i've got this really nice critical setup which is kind of like my base setup at the moment i've got on this ice lizard what this ice lizard is really good at doing is also applying frozen which is a movement speed reduction skill and what you also want to do with this pet is basically with its skills you want to get the um interruption skill because with interruption you get the percentage chance to obviously stop your enemy's war pets from activating their skills which is very very powerful as a utility based pet so that's the only reason i would recommend the ice lizard in any case scenario for wild deer 
But if you want a really safe choice, you can't go wrong, honestly, with the Sapphire Fear Drake. And if you want a little bit more of an adventurous pick, the Thunder Lizard is actually a surprisingly good pet too. With that, we're going into the artifacts, and you can imagine the artifacts are really, really simple to go for. And we're going to work, obviously, from my minimal recommendation, which is going to be Time Bomb or the Magic Bomb um, in the game. Really easy to obtain this through, obviously, just your normal keys. But if you are one of those players that might have spanned the Forge of Light event, I'm going to also recommend Lakeside Rhapsody. I'm not going to lie really good skill too because it's a nice area of effect damage for your march and honestly you might not have a good time bomb but surprisingly you might get a good lakeside rhapsody so you have two good options here you can run on your mage march once you've got one of these on you're going to be looking to upgrade it and the way i would personally upgrade this artifact is either going for the Phoenix Eye, because the Phoenix Eye is honestly a really, again, good artifact. It's easy for free-to-play players to obtain, because, again, you can get this through your gold key slash, like, artifact key system. Or if you don't want to run a more damage artifact, people are underrating this, and more people are noticing in my duels, I use it, and they're losing to it. And it is the Tier of Arbon. And the reason why I really do like the Tear of Arbon, and the only reason I like this artifact, is when you level 5 it. When you level 5 this artifact, it's one of the only actual artifacts mages have in this legendary you know, category, which gives you an insane amount of unit defense, and obviously combining that with that damage dealt and the damage um, taken reductions of 5%, you actually do some really good sustained damage, meaning you just take so much more damage compared to most players, and then you can heal up and obviously heal up your team, which is really good. So I do actually recommend this. You'd be surprised on how good this artifact is. I might even make a video on it if you want. Just pop a comment down below. But then what you would also, if you're really, really big, 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 and you're lucky, you will also run Mirage Orb. This thing, I think, is the best artifact in the game currently right now until something else comes out. This, for the majors, especially for the majors, is, I think, the best option. It just does an insane amount of damage. It's really cool. It has a CC effect tied into it and just has everything you need, basically, in an artifact. So I would also recommend this. And then the last thing I would recommend, if you don't have any of those artifacts, if you don't have any of them, is going to be the Breath of Yagantis. Again, actually a very offensive, good artifact. Break down the enemy's defense just before you hit them with that skill cycle. And your teammates hopefully have a skill cycle too. And you're going to be doing some massive amount of damage. I personally wouldn't recommend the Infernal Flame. Why? Just because Infernal Flame, I think, is tailored to Lilia and Lilia alone. So just leave her to it. And that's it, right? So nice and simple artifacts. So now we've gone over all of that kit. Let's now just go straight into his two different talent pages that I'm going to recommend to you guys in 2024 and onwards. And you can't honestly go wrong with either of them. And welcome to the talent section. So we are going to go through all of this as in-depth as we can, but without boring you too much, right? Because I'm trying to cut down all of these guides into a nice and kind of bite-sized guide so it doesn't ravel on too long, right? So the first build we are going to go over for you guys is actually what I've nicknamed the friendly build. This is the basically the most friendly build you can run in the game and i'm going to explain some basic stuff here for you guys so if you've watched this you might understand and learn a little bit about talent systems right so we're going to go down the skill tree the skill tree honestly is one of the best talent trees in the entire game and obviously for majors they love this tree because they can obviously increase their rage generation and their area of effect or basically skill damage output right so what we're going to go for straight away is talking about spirit of rage and head health high this is going to be our rage generation in our kit launching a, a normal attack gives us basically 50 rage one thing you'll notice we do not double up on this talent here in head health high here because we could in theory do this and some people will argue all over about if it stacks or if it doesn't stack I can guarantee you both of these will stack. However, 
the chance of it actually giving you all that range is just isn't worth it. So through testing, we've actually come to the determination that basically it's better just to remove the second head held high and go for some actual stats which will give you more of an edge than this actual trying to trigger since you honestly do not see much of a difference with both of these two on the same page so let's go into our skill build so we're going to go down the attack and skill damage this is obvious right we want to just maximize the amount of damage we have we're a mage unit meaning we have very far range <clears throat> and that very far range is going to allow us to basically do maximum damage so we've gone over the rage generation and what i do now in this nice little right side is go for detached because we don't really care about normal attack damage but we do love skill damage so eight percent more hero skill damage for free is actually a really powerful talent that you can be using in this game then what we can be doing from here and and this is what i would call the staple for most skill builds is going for the focus and the raging tide combination so it's just going to give you that nice skill crit damage and skill crit damage chance on top of whatever pairings you might be running in the future with Wild Deer. And that's what's really good about this build. Because you can, again, imagine it with Valen and Valen giving you some magical crit chance. This is just giving you an almost, you know, going up to that 19% when even at level 1. So it's really, really powerful when we're thinking about it. So now you'll notice I have two points left over and I've done this on purpose so we can basically talk about these two different talents. This caged animal I've noticed is okay at certain times. What I mean by that is if you believe you are a player that is able to sustain themselves in battle for a decent period, meaning you can position yourself to keep fighting and then reposition to keep fighting so you don't drop that battle report, you know, in that fight, you will love this talent. And this talent as well is really, really good for Behemoth Raids. It's actually a really, really insane PvE uh, Behemoth Raid talent. So this is a really good one too. So I would always say Caged Animal is really good or suited to I would say a more confident player, maybe a more veteran style player that can understand how to maintain their march in the battlefield without losing their, you know, rage cast. Because the more you can catch this rage, you are going to get some really good damage bonus out of it. But if you don't want to do that and you actually want to go for a more safer option and a more, you know, you don't have to worry about as much and you can just kind of fight whenever. I would always just recommend Thirst of Blood. It's just very, very simple. Whenever you cast your Rage skill, you're going to just deal an additional hero skill damage um, to the target. So nice and simple. Nothing kind of crazy about it. It's just very consistent, very reliable, and very easy to understand. So if you're newer to the game, I would always recommend Thirst of Blood over the Caged Animal. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Hit this. I'm going to put it in now. And with the last point... I'm not going to lie, it's up to you where you want to put this last point. There's quite a lot of places you could put it. Um, you could just go up and get the extra march speed if you really, really wanted to. You could even go down here and try and mitigate the enemy's HP. That wouldn't even be a bad option. But you can go and actually place this point realistically anywhere. The only place I wouldn't place it is like I was suggesting earlier with the head held high. I would not put anything in there. So let's just for argument's sake finish this whole build with overall speed because personally i prefer march speed on my mages so with this build honestly you can't really go wrong because you're getting all the benefits out of that skill tree and then when we look into the pvp tree all you're gaining is just an extra damage you're getting the attack you're getting the skill damage and then you're getting even more damage because you're lasting in battle which is really good in combination with your caged animal, as you can imagine, if you're a more experienced player or you feel you're a good mage player in PvP. The next one I'm going to go over is, again, it's a very good build, very similar in all regards. The only difference is the Magic Shred ability. So, as you can see, we've gone down the exact same tree and we've gone even for First of Blood just to showcase how um, simple this can be. But we're going down the 
magic maelstrom and this is basically allowing us in the second build to basically destroy or I said destroy strip our opponent's magical defense by 10 percent for five seconds before we hit them with our double rage skills right so our wild deer primary and weather is in the deputy slot so really really good skill it's going to basically allow us no matter what to always consistently deal some extra damage for free and it's basically allowing us to get a 10 percent you know defense mitigation and if you're wondering how powerful that is you gotta remember over here you only are allowed to get you know up to what is it two percent basically or one point some odd percent in this uh unquenchable will so it is very powerful to mitigate your opponent's uh defense so that's where i've put it here and as you can imagine like i said in the last one i really really like my march speed so in my last one point i actually put it in magic speed so this three percent so if you're wondering what you should do complete your skill tree as you can see and then come into the magic tree go one two three get your magic maelstrom and with your last point just get three percent march speed because it's actually one percent extra than you get over here in the pvp tree which is very very cool and there, honestly, is two phenomenal builds. And I'm not going to lie, they are no very similar, but you can't go wrong with either of them. Some players do enjoy kind of going down this full, like, PvP tree, and then some in this uh, magic tree. But the skill tree is just too good, boys. It's just too good for Wild Deer. So, honestly, those are the two uh, different trees I'm going to recommend in 2024 for you to run for your match. So, on screen right now is going to be the shred build uh, or the second build for wild deer you can take a screenshot do whatever you need for this and then the second build is going to be the more friendlier build it's basically more tailored to actual pvp since we are going down the pvp tree and it just it, you know a nice and simple build just damage just deal as much damage as you can and you're not worried about stripping people's armor right so nothing too crazy and that will sum up the build for wild deer guys that's everything i'm gonna recommend that you're gonna need to know with this ice mage you honestly will most likely be running wild deer with your halloween with this valen that in your march setup with what i've said in your pets and artifacts and you're gonna be pumping out the damage trust me you'll be pumping out the damage so if you've enjoyed this nice video nice easy hero guide to understand basic simple you know nothing crazy where you wondering what is he talking about i hope you guys have enjoyed it basically <laughs> like i've been trying hard to get this um recorded i've done it so many times so i hope you enjoyed the video this has been the one and only wild deer and you know what to do guys Smash like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Mr. Sneaking and Official. Got a Dragon's content career. We do very good informational guides here with a more laid back style, as you can imagine. And we always do daily uploads for Call of Dragons. So, with all of that, I hope you guys bring out your wild ears. I hope to see you guys on the battlefield and see some nice PvP footage with them. And until then, stay safe, stay sneaky, guys. Peace out.